Hey everybody, welcome to day 25 of our physical distancing live broadcast at 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, right behind me, we're um, going to do some sneaking up on some ducks that are in the creek. We're looking at them with the binoculars so we have a guess of who they are, but as soon as I start uh, finish my intro and some reminders on this, I think this is the third or fourth day of our wildlife tracking and birding series. Uh, we're kind of uh, going to sum up everything uh, today and uh, do a creek sneak. So we're going to sneak up to the creek and then we're going to sneak up the creek and see what... Oh, there's the bumblebee. Massive around. solitary bumblebee. Massive solitary bumblebee. Um, I'm going to do a creek sneak and see what we can find using the skills that we've been learning the last uh, couple of days, one of which is being quiet for the first time in four days. I'm going to try to be quiet so we don't scare everything off in advance. It's perfect because the birds have started singing about this time, uh, marking their territory for about the last time of the day. There's some alarms going on in the background, robins alarming and singing. Look at that solitary bumblebee coming around. Anyways, um, <laughs> as well as uh, we're going to be looking for amphibians in the creek. We're also going to be looking for um, bugs. <laughs> we may do another bug day in the future. Oh, yeah. We'll sneak down there, like I mentioned, looking for bugs, amphibians, birds, mammals, whatever we run into. We hope it inspires you to get outside and enjoy nature in your backyard with the extra benefits of free vitamin D, Yay. virus mitigation, Yay. mental and spiritual health, especially during this upcoming Holy Weekend in the Christian tradition. Speaking of which, I, uh, in honor of that, we're going to do, I'm going to do, Kevin's going to help, three days of campfire concerts, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, including inspirational songs and stories from Wolf Camp history, legend, and beyond. So, if you benefit from this video and you currently have some income or financial resources, click on the link in the description to keep Wolf Camp staff employed until summer season starts during this time when we can't run our every weekend workshops. So thanks. All right, before we sneak down to the creek, we have to cover safety issues. All I'm going to mention is that for safety out in the field, you have to think about perceived risk versus actual risk. And but we covered some of those four and five days, four days ago or so. And research what's the most important risk to mitigate. You can never eliminate the risks. You just bring them all the way down to where they're acceptable or less, um, so that you can go out safely. Um, and you can go to our um, blog post on navigational skills, and it has 30 tips, including first. 10 tips on navigation are basically safety tips. Go to our blog post and I'll try to link all these things into uh, this uh, description on our when we post this to our blog later tonight. Um, and then also should you know think about this should we worry about animals today? Or are there other things more dangerous when we're down by the creek like flash floods, Maybe drowning, impact on the environment. Big time. Yeah. yeah. And so those are things that you want to think about and can think about perceived versus actual risks. Okay. And then on awareness, we're going to train you on that because we really didn't go too hard into that next three, last three days. This will take three or four minutes. Number one, I want everybody to do the first most important survival and awareness skill, which is breathing. Breathing is the opposite of panic. When people tell you, don't panic. You just kind of freeze and you panic. Um, you have to replace that with something that's breathing. So stick out your stomach when you breathe in. And then your chest. And then blow it all out. Don't worry, I'm uh, on the other side of the screen, so I'm not um, getting really contagious. <laughs> and you're not me either, so blow it out. <laughs> and then suck it in. And then do like 10 really slow, deep breaths. That'll open up your awareness like you wouldn't believe it. It'll warm you up in survival situations too and make you way more aware. Second most important skill is wide angle vision. Yeah, we talked, so, about, that. Yeah, we talked about that three or four days ago. So put your fingers out to the side of your eyes. Oh, who's that? That's flying right there. No. Oh, it's over. It's a nice mallet. Okay. So fingers out to the side. Look straight in front of you. Thank you, Kimmer. 
Kim is doing it for me. Uh, and get kind of your eyes used to seeing uh -oh. wide angle vision. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn my hat around. Um, and then uh, third most important thing is the expansive hearing. You can actually cup your hands just as if you're like you're a satellite dish and find out what's the best. You can cut out sounds of the city like this and only hear what's behind me. You can call that deer ears. All right. And then there's some really important skills to tracking and trailing. Walk into the wind, not with the wind because oh, there's a little fly. Oh. oh no, darn, I've been talking too long. Yep. Anyways, walk into the wind and also uh, have, if you're trying to look out and see, have the sun behind you because if things are looking at you, they're gonna be blinded by the sun and uh, you'll be backlit. You don't want it opposite that. So we're, it's about 6 p.m. so the sun's in the west and so we're going to walk, uh, first we're going to get down there and then we're going to walk east in the, along the creek to look for things. Are we ready to roll? Yeah. Okay, let's go down there before anything else flies away. Alright, so I am going to zoom in case we see. Oh, no, it's mind. not zoomed. Don't zoom on mine. Oh, Don't zoom on okay. mine. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's because it freezes up. Yeah, all right. Well, so does, uh, mine's not zooming for some reason. Oh, well. All right, well, here we go. Let me mine says something. What does it say? All right. There we go. All right. All right, let's go. Okay, do you want to hold on to these and people can walk through? But I guess. Oh, wait, I have to uh, teach them the box wrong. Let's just be. Oh, okay. So. you got to talk louder.
there's some keys flying in it. Let's turn to the right and see if we can look up the creek. I'm gonna stay low behind this brush. Widgeon. Yeah. Well, they're moving off. And so. Mallard. So that's one creek coming, the kind of bigger creek coming down. But let's go up now, away from the sun and in, and into the wind. Did you see anything on the tracks right here? Um, just a kick. Well, oh, yeah. two toes forward, two toes back. Yeah. Big toenails. Yeah. Nice dog right there. So we're going to, um, oh, we're going to start walking up the creek now and looking for, um, any birds that are perching on snags or who are singing or causing alarms. Now listen up. Oh, I wonder if people can hear that toey going, <laughs> That's a, uh, there it goes. That's kind of a cautionary companion call between the mate, the pair of spotted toeys going eh? right there. Is that a, what kind of nest is up there? But that toe, those toeys on the other side, other side of the creek. So, all right, we're gonna keep on going. See if we can come across that weasel again, or maybe a muskrat. Or I thought I heard something. In the, um, cattails. You got something in the cattails? Oh, maybe a red winged blackbird. They love cattails. But we don't. Okay, I gotta work on my fox walk through all this dry grass. Oh, that was horrible. Okay, but we want to make some track move. See if we can come across anything. Sometimes it's quieter to walk in the creek. However, it's much more of environmental impact if you actually walk in the creek now, right? Oh, nice. Okay, so Song Sparrow just did its song. Let's see. If Oh, yeah. So you guys see that dead tree right in front of us? Okay, it's just to the left. It's kind of in the shadow of the a cedar tree, so it's hard to see. And of course, it's brown because these brown birds are all crown dwellers. Or should I say they're crown dwellers, so they're brown. But anyway, to the left, kind of through the willows. It just moved. Let's see if it sings again. still calling and the robin's still singing a bit in the distance but that song sparrow is a little freaked out by us maybe it'll give a little alarm if I keep moving Uh, kind of deep and soft and so it'd be a pretty big impact to walk 
walk in it. So we're going to, oh, there goes the Song Sparrow. Flew down creek. Got it. Anyway, so uh, we let's see if we come across maybe a marsh wren, red-winged blackbird. These are the birds that love this habitat, as well as, of course, there's all this low brush, so the song sparrow or anything brown uh, love these kind of habitats. Speaking of cattails, tomorrow or next week on Monday, after a three-day campfire songs and stories, we're going to do a top most important plants. We're going to start with cattails on that Monday. And then Tuesday. Where? Where? What? What? Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, then we're going to do hazelnut uh, as well as acorns. A day each on those, Tuesday and Wednesday. All right. It's still the creek, uh, still be quite an impact. Go right here, it's really soft. And so we're going to stay inland even though it's louder. And we're walking through a lot of grasses, sedges, and rushes. And the rushes, as we learned before, round sedges have edges, and these grasses. Oh, that's a big old um, rush there, but most grasses have leaves on a stalk to the ground. That's kind of a good way to remember the difference between sedges, rushes, and, and um, grasses. Cattails are there. What, you saw the muskrat? Or muskrat trail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these kind of... Um, trails that we've been going across. There's some people down here, but this right here is a muskrat. Lo probably loves coming onto that, uh, oh, that log. Is that on the log right there? It sure is. And then it goes right up this trail right here. We're going to go out and check out this scat. Oh, yeah. Hopefully I won't slip and drop the phones. <laughs> All right. Look at that stuff. go to Jim Halfpenny's Scats and Tracks of North America or uh, David Moskowitz's Wildlife of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, think about that. Oh, Pacific Chorus Tree Frog. I think. Listen to it. I'll go online and listen to Pacific Chorus Tree Frog and Red-Legged Frogs and try to figure out which one that is. It's calling right across there. People see something like this and they're like, oh, dead. Dead, get it out of here. No, this, these snags are the most productive wildlife spots in the forest. The more snags there are, yes, the more dangerous things falling on you, but the more wildlife there will be, all the insects that are in there, and then all the birds who love eating those insects. And they're nesting there. And they're all in that, and there's some great nests in there. Especially the bigger ones. Yeah. Anything that any animal dropped some scat or anything down there, you see? No? Okay. Let's continue through here. All right. Got to stay low. This is kind of interesting spot. Like, oh, yeah. Some tracks.
next deer tracks. that's pushed over. It stays off to the right. There are no tracks in here as far as the deer goes. However, there's some cool uh, deer mouse <laughs> right there. Look at that. Or shrew. Here's another real yeah. cutie. You can see all the toe pads there. Yep. Look at that. Check this out. Now I'm going to turn it around this way. And uh, what do you guys think as far as that goes? Look at how thin those toes are. Long and thin. Long and thin. Kind of like a... Well, you can think bird. You can think muskrat. If they are leaving a little bit of a... I don't see any nails at It's too, end. Yeah, too narrow. Oh. Yep. All right, so we're going to get everybody to look that up in Mark L. Brock's bird tracks and sign or Mark L. Brock's uh, mammal tracks and sign or your local field guide. Figure that one out. All right, let's continue on here. Oh yeah, let's check out the mud over here. Yeah. Mud is the best. Thing. Gotta always keep awareness up. The, bird, the frogs are starting. What do you got across there? Yeah, the birds are not. They were went through their singing right about six o'clock. All right, let's continue on. Let's see if we can get up to the creek again before we have to sign off for the day. And again, join us tomorrow, but only on the Wolf Camp Facebook page. Oh, there's a flicker calling. Where is it? Where's the flicker? Where is it? Oh, it's backlit. Just passed. Oh, and then I hear the marsh ran off in the distance. If maybe we can get close enough to it. Anyway, tomorrow check out the Wolf Camp Facebook page for live broadcasts and our YouTube slash Wolf Camp College page and subscribe there so we can get up to a thousand and get out in the field like this live broadcasting to YouTube without a computer. A this is amazing there. track. I wonder if I'd love to get across there, but it's super deep. No, Deeper than our boots. Deer Some deer tracks. It looks big enough for a beaver to go in and out, but mostly a muskrat, I would say, probably, as far as ground critters. Also the raccoons and everything else that loves going in and out of creeks. Some nice insects action on top of here. All right. What time do we have? Oh, that's right. I can uh, sign off as soon as the alarm goes off. All right, we have two minutes left, y'all. Try to catch up to another animal. Flush up. Oh. Get close to that marsh wren that I heard singing up here. Gonna, for sake of time, I'm going to go a bit faster and a little louder. Not that I've been the quietest or the lowest. But... See how the creek gets narrower up yonder? Probably get be able to get right down into it up there. Here's a nice snag. Yeah. Look at all the holes in it. Tons of holes in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of nice little birds that yeah, go for it. While Kim's checking that out, I'm gonna continue on. So catch us tomorrow and the next day and the next day. For campfire songs and stories well you learn a lot about nature amazing uh, insights and then we'll on Monday return to plants and do about three or four days of plants including how to process acorns how to process okay a woodpecker maybe Woodpecker. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to learn Kim's um, sign language. I guess we're going to have to end up over here, y'all. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, pileated 
woodpecker. Dude, I know. Nice. Oh, Pilly comes in here. Look at this one. She, oh, yeah. I can't get in there. It's a rose bush. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Here, this is a phenomenal Ooh, wildlife tree. And look at the, look at all scratch the scratch marks. Things that are climbing right here. up there. And you can measure the distance between the claw marks, claw marks yep. to figure out who it is. Yep. Let's go around the other side. And right. see if oh yeah, way easier to climb on this side. In between here. It's so interesting how low to the ground these. Yeah, those pileated woodpeckers go real low. Sometimes it's they get preyed on because of that. But there's a lot of good insects Look at all down these. low. So. All these holes all over. These moles or voles are. I mean, they're not making they're not those holes. Moles. Yeah. Yeah. See now. These are voles. They certainly have a lot. Well, y'all, that's probably about all we can do for today. And um, and so we're going to um, <laughs> sign off for the day, and we'll see you over around the campfire tomorrow. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with songs and stories of nature and survival.